When it comes to body beeling, you can use body beeling in a few different um, scenarios within the sort of mountains, be it scrambling, be it rock climbing, or be it in winter. We're going to look at body beeling from a bucket seat, which was just dug. Um, look at bringing up a person from below with just a single rope and no belay device. The first thing that I need to think about is which is a live rope side and which is a dead rope side. So the dead rope side being the side that the loose rope goes to, the live rope side being the side of the rope that goes to the climber. So for this scenario, I want to bring my second up onto my right hand side. So my left side is going to be my dead rope side. It's good to dig a rope well somewhere just down and out to the side of your dead rope side. I'll often do it just from being sat in the bucket seat because I find it works quite well. But you can dig it when you're, once you've dug your bucket seat. So I'll just create a bit of a hole just in the side. So when it comes to actually body beeling with the rope, once I've dug my rope well to keep the rope, the dead rope, nice and safe and out to the side, I want to make sure I'm not digging it below the front face of my bucket so I'm not interfering with the strong surface area down here that I'll be pulling against. I then need to get the rope into position and I need to get this rope behind my back. If I'm not wearing a rucksack, it's definitely a little bit simpler. If I'm wearing a rucksack, I definitely need a bit more rope to throw behind me. And if you're ever wearing ski poles or anything like that on your rucksack, you're guaranteed it'll get caught when you try and flick it behind your back. So to get the rope behind my back, I'm just going to sit forward in my bucket seat, just take a skipping rope length of rope there and just flick it up and right over my back. And from there, I should feel it land behind me. And now, basically, I'm creating, I am the anchor that sat in the snow, pulling against this surface area of snow, creating a fairly solid force to help bring this person up. And if they are to slip, I should be able to hold them. To create even more friction, because I've got friction running around my back now, to increase that friction to help control any load that comes onto the live rope, I'm going to take my dead rope hand or arm, which is my left arm this time, and I'm literally just going to wrap it under and over the top of the dead rope. So now you can see a twist coming all the way around my arm, and you know it's right because you end up with the dead rope coming out between your thumb and your forefinger. If you wrap it the wrong way around, you end up with the rope coming out from your pinky. So to get it correct, you're under, over, and capture the rope. When it comes to the live rope side, you never take a twist in the live rope. If you were to take a twist in the live rope and there's a heavy weight or a fall to come onto this rope, it'll damage your arm, it'll be quite sore. So this is a fairly clean rope side, it just sits in your hand. Twist in my left on my dead rope side, clean rope in my live rope hand. To then start bringing the person up, I need to pull in with my live rope hand punch out with my dead rope hand. Once I achieve this, I then need to return my live rope hand out, capture both bits of rope that then allows me to slide my dead rope hand back to the beginning. And this is a motion of four. So if we go one, two, three, four. So it's pushing and pulling, drawing the live rope up, slide the live rope hand forward, capture both strands of rope, slide the dead rope hand back. Every now and again, just flick the rope into the rope well to keep it nice and safe. So it'll be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you do this as fast as is comfortable. You don't try and keep up with the person climbing. They try and keep up with you bringing the rope in. When you're bringing somebody up, body beeling, there might be a time that that person slips and falls. If they're climbing up from below you and they slip and they fall, you're going to feel this weight coming onto the live rope. That's going to give you a bit of a pull. But because they're on a rope from above and you should have been keeping them nice and tight, 
when you do feel that weight come on, all you need to do is just lock this arm across your chest. All that does is increases the friction and the angles to help sort of lock that load and you can hold them nice and securely. So if somebody pops off from below because they're in a top rope situation, all you need to do is just lock that arm off and you can hold them until they can regain their feet. Just remember when you're using the bucket seat alone on this sort of ground, a person that slips isn't going to be hanging in space. You can only use this bucket seat on a good sort of snow slope or a steep snow slope. When it comes to the second person coming up, if you're going to be pitching and they're going to lead up above you, you need to have already thought of this once you've, when you're setting up your bucket seat. You've got your dead rope on this side, live rope on this side. So with the live rope on this side, you're assuming then that they're going to be climbing up above you and out to the right. As they climb above you and start leading, you then need to change from bringing in the rope to obviously paying the rope out to them. And that's going to involve, rather than pulling in with the live rope and punching out with the dead rope hand, you're now going to pull out with the live rope and slide the dead rope hand back down into position. And so you need the person to be moving above you to create some resistance for that to happen. So as they climb above, using the resistance on them, I can then slide my live rope hand back, slide my dead rope hand back to the beginning position and just keep pushing and pulling the rope out. As the second comes up and leads on above you, you need to make sure that as they climb, they stay slightly out to that side. Because if they were to come off and slide into the back of you, or go past you on your dead rope side, there's nothing you can really do for them, and there's nothing you can really do for yourself. So ensuring that they climb up and out to the right and keeping out that way to a degree. So if they were to slip and come sliding past you, then it comes back in to your good body belay position again. This time if they were to fall and come sliding past you, because it's a leader fall and they're gonna have quite a bit more momentum, if you just lock off to hold that fall, the chances are you're gonna hold quite a severe fall and it may take you out of the bucket seat or it may destroy your bucket seat. So this time it requires a bit more of a dynamic belay. So as they come sliding past you, hopefully they'll be self-arresting. As they carry on down the slope and the weight starts to come onto this rope, you'll feel the rope being pulled through from you and you actually wanna let a bit of that rope slide initially and as the rope starts to slide, then you can start to increase your grip on it and increase the angles. So you'll create a dynamic fall, you'll create a dynamic sort of load so you can bring it gently to an arrest. And the rope will run, it'll make a bit of a sort of zinging sound and you'll get a bit of a zzzz as the rope comes to a halt.